Hello there. So in this video, I'm going to calculate the moment of inertia of a solid sphere through direct volume integration. And in the last video, I accomplished the same task, right, by stacking up a bunch of disks. And I would argue that that is a, uh, an easier uh, method of tackling this problem, right? You only end up setting a single integral uh, and you don't have to worry too much about spherical coordinates or things of that nature. Um, but for the sake of completeness, we might as well do it the, uh, the other method, right? Which is to use direct volume integration. Now I'm going to go through this calculation uh, faster than the other ones, right? Because this A is a repeated calculation. I already calculated the moment of inertia of a uniform sphere, but also because we've set up, you know, a couple of integrals at this point with the, uh, the definition of moment of inertia. So I've already labeled uh, one of my mass elements here. It has, uh, right? It has some little mass dm, and it occupies some infinitesimal volume dv, right? And so I know that my moment of inertia i is defined as the integral over my sphere of gamma squared dm. And what's dm going to be equal to, right? As always, dm is just going to be equal to my mass density rho times dv, one of my infinitesimal uh, volume elements, right? So what is rho? Rho is just going to be equal to the total mass of my sphere divided by the volume of my sphere, 4 thirds pi times big R cubed. All right, awesome. So to go from here, we're going to have to actually use spherical coordinates to find what a mass element uh, actually looks like, or uh, a volume element actually looks like, and you know think about the uh, the actual boundaries of my uh, of my sphere. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I've gone ahead and I've drawn out another picture, right? So my mass element is now just a point in this uh, diagram here on the left, right? And in spherical coordinates, it's going to be at some azimuthal angle phi, some polar angle theta, and some radius little r, right? So let's not confuse this with uh, capital R, which is the radius of my entire sphere. This mass element, right, it could be at any point in the solid sphere, right? It could be at any radius little r all the way up until the, uh, the big radius, capital R. And so, right, we can create a volume element in this uh, spherical coordinate space the exact same way I did uh, when in my uh, calculating the moment of inertia of a disk video, right, where I kept r fixed and varied uh, my angle, and then I kept my angle fixed and I varied r. So we're going to do the exact same thing here, and the result, I'm sure there are lots of videos that do this in more detail, right, is that we get a volume element that's going to look something like this, that has some component dr, some component r sine theta, d phi, and some component r d theta, right? And again, when we limit this down, right, infinitely small mass elements, then this is going to essentially look like a little cube with each of these components, right? With some dr, some r sine theta, d phi, and some r d theta. Right, and so the volume element dv is equal to r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And that's the, uh, the general form for a volume element in spherical coordinates. I know I went through this uh, kind of fast. 
you know, uh, there's plenty of videos and explanations online in more detail. But yeah, you just get to this, uh, you know, by varying each of your your three coordinates, keeping the other two fixed, and then building your uh, your volume element from there. But we're just going to be using this result. Let's also note, right, that gamma, this uh, this distance gamma. Let's go ahead and write that out in terms of r and theta, right? And so, of course, we can clearly see that we have a right triangle here, right? There's a right triangle right there. And so gamma, this is going to be equal to gamma equals r times sine theta, right? OK, awesome. So let's go ahead and start making some substitutions, right? So from up above, we had that i Let's go back into uh, into black. Here we go. So I had i was equal to integral over my sphere of gamma squared times rho times dv. Right, and so this is just going to be equal to the integral, I'll still say over sphere for now, of r to the fourth, right? When we plug all of this in, this is going to be r to the fourth sine cubed theta times rho times dr d theta d phi. Feel free to pause the video. Make sure that when you plug everything in, that's the result that you get, right? And I'll go ahead and next I'll take the rho out of the integral. And now let's go ahead and think about our boundaries. All right, so where's uh, little r going to vary from? Well, our radii, these can vary anywhere from 0, right, to capital R, if this sphere has some radius of, uh, of capital R, right? So that's easy. We can be anywhere inside that sphere, so from 0 to capital R, right? And so now theta. Theta is going to vary from 0 to pi to, uh, right, if theta starts here, we're going to move from the top of the sphere down to the bottom of the sphere, kind of like this, by ranging theta from 0 to pi. And then phi, phi at each theta is going to range from 0 to 2 pi, right? We're going to start at 0, and we're going to build a circle all the way up. Right, a closed loop from 0 to 2 pi. And in doing this, right, because remember, we're also varying our radius little r, right, we're going to be building a bunch of rings, right, up from the top of my sphere all the way down to the bottom of my sphere that are going to kind of build up this, uh, this solid sphere. Hopefully uh, that quick uh, explanation makes sense for our boundaries for uh, theta and phi. So theta is going to range from 0 to pi, and phi is going to range from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so all that's left to do is just to compute out this uh, integral. And then, you know, we're, we're basically done at that point, right? And I'm not going to go into all of the details, just again, for the sake of speed, um, right? But this integral, Right, if you go out and compute it, it's going to give you 8 over 15 times pi r to the fifth. Right? And again, the the most difficult part, and it's really not that that bad. The most difficult part is the integration with respect to uh, to theta, right? Because integrating with respect to r is very easy. That's just gonna turn this into one fifth r to the fifth sine cubed theta, right? We plug in our boundaries and we have no dependence on phi. So that just ends up giving us a, uh, a factor of two pi once we end up doing this. So it's really not that bad uh, of an integral, um, but yeah, th this will be the, uh, the end result from that, right? And so when we plug in rho, rho is going to be equal to my total mass, as I said before, 
root 4 thirds pi r cubed. And again, when we multiply these terms together, it's just going to be a game of uh, cancellation, right? So we have r cubed here, r squared, and I have these pi's canceling out. And then also I'm going to get, right, because this is really ultimately the same as multiplying, right? Dividing by 4 thirds is the same as multiplying by 3 fourths. So this 3 is going to cancel there. This 4 is going to cancel here. And we're going to end up getting our same result as before of 2 fifths m r squared, right? Which we already saw with the, uh, the disk stacking method. So there we go. Fantastic. I know I went through some steps, skipped over a couple of things. This was a, a little bit faster than the uh, uh, other videos. I more so just wanted to show this as yes, you know, you can in fact calculate the moment of inertia of a sphere directly using the definition of moment of inertia as opposed to, you know, getting more creative uh, and doing something like building up the, uh, the sphere with a bunch of disks right? It's very doable, um, you know, maybe a little bit more mathematically involved, however. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you so much for watching.